Cancel culture claiming a new victim. Teen Vogue editor-in-chief Alexi McCammond forced out just days before even starting her new job after staffers revolted over derogatory tweets she wrote 10 years ago when she was a teenager. McCammond apologized for them in 2019 and then again when this scandal surfaced. Her old colleague at Axios, Jonathan Swan, saying things are getting out of hand. I was just really sad to see this happen. I've, I've worked with her for four years. She doesn't have a racist bone in her body. If we can't, as an industry, accept somebody's sincere and repeated apologies for something they tweeted when they were 17 years old, I mean, what are we doing? Kaylee, Kaylee, I want to go to you first on this. Uh, to be clear, these were some of them tweets that she sent when she was 17. Does this just go too far? Oh, absolutely, Sandra. I mean, I think there's no denying we are in the craziest period culturally. I mean, think of what happened on The Bachelor. You know, you had a girl named Rachel who was canceled after yeah. giving a sincere and heartfelt apology. Then you go and you have Chris Harrison, who's canceled for giving a comment about someone else who was canceled and saying, let's show grace. And he hit the nail on the head. He then apologized for that, by the way, but he hit the nail on the head by using the word grace. We have to give people an opportunity to have redemption. She did something dumb when she was 17, said something dumb. She apologized. But if an apology Apology is not enough. What is enough? I'd ask the gods of cancel culture, if you can't apologize and be, be forgiven, what do they need to do? What are the next steps? Is it public flogging? I mean, what, what are we going to do? She apologized, move on, let her have a job and a life. That's a good question, Jesse. I support public floggings. <laughs> I could name several people I'd like to flog right now. Um, I do feel bad for her because I'm a very compassionate person. She's lost her job. Her boyfriend's lost her job. I would give her a job if she would work for me, but she probably hates me and would never work <laughs> for me at all. So that's fine. But it does seem like the left are starting to eat their own, and that usually signals the end mm. of something like this. I have a feeling cancel culture might be winding down <laughs> in cultural revolutions. That usually indicates that time is running out. It does seem to me that we only can cancel people because of the Internet. Before the Internet, you couldn't dig into someone's past and say, ah, in 96 you said that, because there was no Internet. Now I think people are realizing that maybe it's not such a good idea to write down every thought that goes through your head on the internet so Fair everyone enough. can see it. You're just giving all these internet assassins more stuff to shoot at. So maybe the, the novelty of writing down every joke you think might be funny when you're 17 not a good way to live life. It's a good, it's a good lesson, uh, continued lessons learned, right? Juan, it wasn't just the staffers that were going after her, by the way. It was the advertisers that then started going after right. Teen Vogue in the wake of this controversy. Uh, Ulta Beauty, Burt's Bees, major advertisers with Teen Vogue, they suspended their campaigns with the publication. So there was a lot of money on the line, too, here. That's exactly right. So I think you have to put that in context. It was, and for them, it was like a business decision. But the, uh, you know, I mean, to me, I, I really do believe in forgiveness. And I, I think that you think about this as a juvenile, you know, and juveniles make mistakes. We all, I, I just think everybody who's, you know, 16, 17, you do crazy stuff. Yeah. But if, it, if even if it's a criminal act, Sandra, in the courts, they give you a separate set of rules with more grace because it's tried yeah. as a you're tried as a juvenile, and so here I think in so this you don't situation, think she should have been canceled. People, well, I think the business decision is separate from all mm. this talk about cancel culture. I think you know ultra ultra beauty and Burt's Bee and th those are million dollar deals for Condé Nast. And what the head of Condé Nast said in a statement was that not only was the staff upset, but he said the readers of mm. their magazines uh, took offense at this, and they, they were feeling blowback from not only the advertisers, but the readers and the yeah. staff. That's a lot. And so I think they had to make a decision. But I do think that, you know, a moment of grace for someone who was so young, I just hope this is a difficult memory as she rises to much mm. higher things in life. Because she was pretty accomplished. She had already done a lot that led up to her getting this position. Greg, Greg, did you ever send any questionable t tweets when you were 17 years old? Try 37, <laughs> 47. All right, before I get on my rant, because I'm going to get on a rant, uh -oh. can we just say what an awful brand... T 
Teen Vogue is. Mm. It's not really for teens, and it has nothing to do with Vogue. How do the editors, editors at Vogue cope with the fact that Teen Vogue is basically Marxist agitprop? If you actually read it, it's child abuse. Imagine, like, teen popular mechanics just covering gardening, just totally just, just not even covering what they're, what they're called, or teen good housekeeping. We're just going to do gender issues. I mean, that's what they've hijacked. <laughs> they actually hijacked it, and nobody talks about it. Okay, we predicted this would happen. It was okay. Remember how okay it was when it was only white people getting canceled? But Ooh. now you have a young, black, talented woman getting canceled. Is this practice still worth it? Is it still worth it if you could take down 10 other white people, but you have to sacrifice one young black woman who, may, who probably doesn't deserve it? So this gets to my big question, and I'm so disappointed, Juan, in you, because we, because where are the mentors, right? Mm. Where are the men Like, Joy Reid was nearly fired for uh, blatant, bigoted, homophobic blog posts that she initially denied. She wasn't fired. She was protected by her network, possibly because they needed a, quote, patina of diversity, her phrase. But given her experience and her success, shouldn't she have the guts to demand Condé Nast stick to their guns and fire their damn news staff because they can and protect this young mm. woman who has done did only did something wrong which is everything what about Don Lemon mm. Don Lemon has a voice yep. he's successful he's black why doesn't he come to the aid where are where are the mentors of color who are defending these people? Lastly, I said this before, the Achilles heel are corporations. Mm -hmm. They are cowards. The actual mob is very, very tiny, but the, what the mob has is that they're immovable, and that scares people. Ten people can feel like a hundred, and so you say, oh my God, the ad advertisers are scared. They're scared of nothing and everything. Same goes for viewers. You don't know how many viewers or, re or writers there, readers there are that are upset. So this is all a giant mirage created by some very loud voices. They, If, if some company just stood up once, mm. just stood up once and said, you know what, we're sorry, but the newsroom has to go. We believe in this woman. She can hire the people that she wants. They might be all people of color, but you people, you narrow-minded weirdo mob, get the hell out of our, here are your boxes, get out. But Condé Nast, they're a bunch of cowards. They're pathetic and disgusting. Yep, exactly. But Greg, this uh -huh. has nothing to do with race. You know, Greg, this has nothing to do with race. I don't okay. think it's right to bring race into this. <laughs> okay, Juan, way to miss the point. I said stand up I for think you stand up for time. people. Stand up for people. Don't go, hey, it's well, a business yeah. if decision. If you want to say stand up it's for people, you said you said you said we're the the black yes. mentors. I don't think that's what this is about, Greg. It's not about Why race. Is, I think so, okay, this is go, about... Okay, 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 okay. Jo okay. Jonathan Swan, a white Brit. Who can get... Who can you... You can't find anything whiter than a swan. He's the guy that's standing up. Not... He's the guy... We're that's all going to rely on Jonathan he... Swan? Great. Come on. He worked, he he worked was, with her. They, he they did accuse her, her of being racist because we of those mentors. Just so you know. We need but more okay. mentors. I've got to leave it there, guys. I'm getting yelled at. It has nothing to do with her race, okay? Okay, coming up...